But you mentioned recently that you're a Christian, that you go to church. How, how important is your faith to Donald Trump? Very important. I'm a Protestant. I'm a Presbyterian. Those who are interested in the prophetic role of the United States in the Bible should study Revelation 13, which describes two powers working together in the last days. These two powers, or beasts, in Revelation 13 are two kingdoms. A beast is symbolic of a kingdom or political power, as confirmed in Daniel 7.23. Thus he said, The fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon earth. The beast, or kingdom, that rises up out of the sea, signifying a densely populated area, just as a sea of people is also used today to describe many people, which points to the papacy coming out of the heart of Europe. The second beast comes out of the earth, meaning a sparsely populated area pointing to the United States of America. Revelation 13 verses 11 to 12 Then I saw a second beast coming up out of the earth. It had two horns like a lamb, but it spoke like a dragon. It exercised all the authority of the first beast on this behalf, and made the earth and its inhabitants worship the first beast, whose fatal wound had been healed. These two Bible verses predict that the United States of America will make an image of the beast, forcing the people of the world to worship or reverence the day that was created by the Roman Catholic Church. Sunday cannot be found anywhere in the Bible, and is the pagan sun worship day. Practically everything Protestants regard as essential or important they have received from the Catholic Church the Protestant mind does not seem to realise that in accepting the Bible and observing the Sunday and keeping Christmas and Easter, they are accepting the authority for the spokesman of the Church, the Pope, our Sunday visitor, February the 5th, 1950. He exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him, and causeth the earth and them that dwell therein to worship the first beast, whose deadly wound was healed, Revelation 13:12. That's because Sunday is a day of worship. You're supposed to be in a Christian church. But wait a second, aren't we supposed to have religion, religious freedom in America? Some religions worship on different days. Because blue laws, which date back to colonial times, still ban that in a dozen states. Originally, they outlawed regular Sunday work. No buying, no selling, traveling, public entertainment, or sports even. People, it's baked in, have always had this temptation to let work crowd out all the other things that matter family, faith, and they have to be told again and again, knock it off, don't work. It's interesting. You think people yeah. are lazy, but they work too much. Americans work too much. Maybe, but they should certainly be able to choose their own days off. The idea that somehow a bunch of guys in a state capitol somewhere know what's best for us in terms of you know how many days off we take and when we take them. In order for the United States to form an image of the beast, the religious power must so control the civil government that the authority of the state will also be employed by the church to accomplish her own ends. The image to the beast represents that form of apostate Protestantism which will be developed when the Protestant churches shall seek the aid of the civil power for the enforcement of their dogmas. When Sunday observance shall be enforced by law, and the world shall be enlightened concerning the obligation of the true Sabbath, then whoever shall transgress the command of God to obey a precept which has no higher authority than that of Rome, will thereby honour popery above God. He is paying homage to Rome and to the power which enforces the institution ordained by Rome. Yes. You say to them, yeah. look, I have to have the Sabbath yes. off, yes. which may I just confess that I learned in my first meeting with Devon, all these years I thought the Sabbath was Sunday. Yeah. I've been going to church. We say worship on the Sabbath, worship on the Sabbath in the Baptist church. And you corrected me. You said, no, Sunday is the first day of the week. Sabbath is Friday sundown to Saturday Sunday. That's right. That's I right. stand corrected. He is worshiping the beast in his image. As men then reject the institution which God has declared to be the sign of his authority and honor and instead that which Rome has chosen as the token of her supremacy, they will thereby accept the sign of allegiance to Rome the mark of the beast. And that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. More Indians are turning to mobile payments as India struggles with a shortage of cash. The crisis started around a month ago when the government abruptly pulled two large the two largest rupee notes from circulation. It was the 500 and the 1,000 rupee. Now, they actually account for 86% of all cash in the country. 
Popular culture proclaims the RFID chip is the mark of the beast. However, let us first ponder the scripture. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. Before we investigate what the mark of the beast is, we must first discover how the no buy and sell would be administered, and only a cashless society can achieve that. The greatest misconceptions are spread by repeating the opinions of others. Let us go straight to the source, the Bible, and learn the clear and distinct definition of what exactly is the mark of the beast. A beast in Bible prophecy is a kingdom as explained in the following verse, Daniel 7.23. Thus he said, the fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon the earth. Now the mark which belongs to the papacy is the professed holy day of mainstream Christianity. Sunday is our mark of authority. The church is above the Bible and this transference of Sabbath observance is proof of that fact. Catholic Record of London, Ontario, September 1st, 1923. The Pope's title, Vicarious Filii Dei, Vicar or Representative of the Son of God, adds up to 666 in Latin, Greek and Hebrew. Vicarious, or Vicar, is derived from the word substitute, as the Pope assumes the title Substitute of Christ on Earth. Therefore, Mark of the Beast 666 is a prophecy that every nation will enforce a Sunday law by fine, economic sanctions, and finally, the death penalty. The United States or Vatican Alliance can achieve this goal through controlling the global financial systems of the world, implementing sanctions or withholding global currency or access to the swift international payment system. The Mark of the Beast is an invisible mark, and like the Seal of God, which is also invisible, is an individual choice of whom to obey, symbolizing either God's commands or Satan's counterfeit. The mark in the forehead pertaining to both the mark of the beast and the seal of God signifies the moral choice of how they will obey, as the frontal lobe at the front of the forehead is where moral decisions are made, therefore the mark is symbolic of that choice. However, the mark of the beast can also be found in the hand, signifying actions. For example, an atheist or Muslim can keep the global Sunday law by actions, and by those actions they will receive the mark in their right hand, different to those who receive the mark of the beast in their foreheads by believing and choosing Sunday as their religion. And those who refuse the Sunday law will be penalised and persecuted in stages of fines, imprisonment and the death penalty. You may say that the Sabbath day, Saturday, belongs to the Jews. However, the book of Genesis negates this idea. Genesis 2 3. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because that in it he had rested from all his work which God created and made. So, Genesis chapter 2 verse 3 silences the argument that only the Jews were commanded to keep the Sabbath. James chapter 2 10. For whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend in one point, he is guilty of all. In the issue of the contest, all Christendom will be divided into two great classes. Those who keep the commandment of God and have the faith in Jesus, and those who worship the beast in his image and receive his mark. Although church and state will unite in their power to compel small and great, rich and poor, free and in bond. Revelation chapter 13 verse 16 Yet the people of God will not receive it. But Christians of past generations observed Sunday, supposing that in so doing they were keeping the Bible Sabbath. And now there are true Christians in every church not accepting the Roman Catholic Communion, who honestly believe that Sunday is the Sabbath of divine appointment. God accepts their sincerity of purpose and their integrity before him. But when the Sunday observance shall be enforced by law, and the world shall be enlightened concerning the obligation of the true Sabbath, then whosoever shall transgress the law of God to obey a precept that has no higher authority than that of Rome, will then honor popery above God. He is paying homage to Rome and to the power that enforces the institution ordained by Rome and is worshipping the beast in his image. Men will then reject the institution that God has declared to be the sign of his authority and honour in its stead that which Rome has chosen in token of her supremacy. They will have then set their sign as their allegiance to Rome. The Mark of the Beast and it is not until the issue is plainly set before the people and they are brought to choose between the commandments of God and the commandments of men. 
Those who continue in transgression will receive the mark of the beast. Many think the RFID chip will be the mark of the beast. However, this theory does not pass the biblical test. But nevertheless, the RFID chip, facial recognition machines, smart card with SIM, Apple Pay, and many other identification cards a validation that a world government can implement a no-buy-sell ultimatum if the Pope's mark, Sunday Law, is not observed. Greetings, I'm Governor Mike Pence. You know, it's my honor this year to serve as the Republican nominee for Vice President of the United States with my running mate, Donald Trump. I'm grateful to be able to join you, if only by videotape, but I'm not sure how they introduce me. The introduction I prefer is pretty short. I'm a Christian, a conservative, and a Republican in that order. And really, it's as a fellow believer uh, that I'm particularly honored to be able to address you today. I know every one of us has our own story about how we came to faith. For me, I was raised in a family where faith was important. Church on Sunday, grace before dinner.